Os mina sang, Mac Megadeth here, and today we are back with a tier list video. And for this time, it's kind of like a working tier list at all times because there's always new right line coming in, and that is the standard right line tier list. And this time, I decided to consider every single card that was released before BTO6 and and, and the BTO6 itself, you know, with the including the PRs and everything. So I will not be considering really call booster three supports as I think that should be considered as a whole booster in itself. And yeah, I think there is a lot of interesting change view going on because there is a trend that I noticed from the BT16 convert in the fact that they are trying to speed up a lot of deck capability in a sense that they want many of these decks to be able to push their full power online by turn 3 and because of that a lot of deck is affected by kind of this change also a few things I think I want to make it fair in this tier list is that I will be putting up to 3 entries on S tier and 10 entries on A tier only so anything that wasn't able to be in the top 10 of the A it's by far doesn't mean that it is weak deck in any means it is just that compared to the other 10 deck in the A tier it just kind of fell off just a little bit and yeah if you guys enjoy this kind of content consider like share and subscribe to the channel and you know ring that bell to keep up with all the notification and without further ado let's get into it well let's start off with just re-ranking in general this time from bottom up because a lot of decks in like a bottom tier that really really get an improvement and in my opinion really really make it stand out nice the very first one is actually Eva. Eva, I mentioned in my previous video, kind of needs one more research to make everything consistent. And now we, she got it and it is fantastic. Not only she can put her push her full power as early as turn 3, which means that she got guaranteed one additional attack with additional crit. Very scary, even with the fact that the crit trigger is confirmed. It is kind of exists in the game already. But I think in general, Eva rush consistency improved a lot because the deck has already a very good amount of resource card and everything that one single card really really improved the deck performance by a lot it's kind of like gravity as situ situation all over again and with all that being considered i'll put in a tier at the moment i will adjust as it goes so yeah okay let's moving on to the c tier and there are generally two decks that i want to give it some props up and that is rora and the chaos mainly both because of the the order and also now that i have played against rora i realized how wrong I was when I was judging it back in the previous video. It was a really really powerful deck. It has a take off a token which allow you to just spawn multiple you did at once and not only that it's technically a four attack deck thanks to ready lena and with the brand new order they just make the roro consistency improve by mouse synergy and in my opinion very scary deck to be looking out for not in the top tier but i view willing to raise it to b tier then another deck that i want to raise the rank is chaos chaos well initially it has a problem hitting 13 souls without using without the use of the soul charge order but now you got a, an order that kind of fixed every problem that the deck has not only that new order that he got also helped to charge multiple units into soul helping to his soul count it also helped to call mikani from soul means that you technically don't need mikani in your hand at all times and also plus 10k to one of the regard you can just plus to mikani combine with gwendo you get a really really easy setup on turn three as well and like you don't really it, it makes turn chaos turn three a lot more scary even if the deck still not hit 13 so with different name consistently but the fact that the other player do so much for them is worth a rank up but it's not gonna be in like a top tier or anything it's just like a bottom of B tier it just get a lot better Kiao is one of those decks where I see it get a lot of improvement as the more generic dust deck card is added and if there's some weird synergy going on with those generic cards that's when Chaos will get a huge boost. Excellent. Okay, let's move on to the B tier. And the first unit that I want to raise into like a high tier immediately is... I wouldn't call it high tier, but like I, I want to raise into the higher position is definitely Dian. I'll put him in the same position as like Soga and the PBO right now. Because of the fact that now that I have played against uh, Overlord a few times already, I feel that the deck consistency improved a lot. Because of the fact that you can just do two Vanguard attacks on turn 3 already as long as you just don't run overlord in together but if you choose to run the dragonic overlord you do have some benefits but 
I feel like the fact that you can't just go into the double vanguard restand on turn 3 is really insane. And we all know by now that the end so far has one of the more cheaper restanding effects at the moment. Like I know 40 is the cheapest but it requires fill so that means more cards minus from hand. While this thing doesn't really need too much requirement so yeah. Okay then we move to Felty Rose and Forotia. Okay uh, I will keep Felty, uh, Felty Rose in the same tier because the deck is capable of brushing from turn 3 onwards and you can do quite a lot of scary column during that period of time. But for Forotia I'm just gonna brought her down a bit because you know a lot of deck in the higher tier got so many good supports and she's still waiting for her new friend cards that work well with her and I think because of that I will chip the bank down a bit first and let's see how the Ridicle Booster 3 treated her. 30 Rose will still keep, I'll keep 30 Rose in the same position because of the fact that um, the deck still can manage the same playstyle very well on turn 3 from the start already and it doesn't change too much and because of that it's kind of like a very fun deck to play not horrible not in a dire need of something stronger Greedon though Greedon is one of those just in my opinion that they're trying to make it better but they're trying to going it in the wrong way for many of the cards you're failing on the highest level no no and with all that being considered despite he being able to restand on turn 3 this goes down okay I'm Saying this first because of the fact that yes, there is a brand new card that allow him to counter charge which makes a lot of his skill playable but it doesn't fix the core issue of Greedon that much and I think Greedon is one of those deck where they put too much restriction on him on, on the Greedon himself that it make it really really hard to kind of find making a new support that like kind of fix the solution unlike Bruce which has a little bit more of a simpler effects. As much as it's pain me so much, I'm gonna push the Greedon down and I hope this guy get better in BTO7 because I think that's the booster where like a dust will get a lot of huge support. Okay, Clarissa. Um, same reason as Felty Rose. Didn't really change too much. I mean like personally for me, I'm not the biggest fan of all his effect. Yes, pressure, but it has been constantly not very iffy to run and everything. So I will leave her in the same spot as it is last time. I saw low B tier. But what I want to shift down is definitely Hexa Orb. And this, as someone who have used Hexa Orb in the actual proper tournament, you know, the VMC, I feel like Hexa Orb really get the short end of the stick in this PTO6 supports. There, she get a few powerful cards, but non fixing her main issue. And that is the fact that she still need Persona, right? And her resource still quite really, really expensive. And yes, I know there is a new card came out. That shit is a PR. It's hard to combine. And also, you saw Blast 2 for a counter charge and a draw, which is still very powerful. But I feel that it's not enough to really, really fix the current issue that the Hexa Orb still have. And then, let's move on to the Flagberg. And Flagberg doesn't. Ranking doesn't change too much, but I will still leave him in the same spot as it is because yes, he get a brand new card that allow him to dish multiple attacks consistently without worrying too much on opponent attacking the uh, your ray card column because it can be left in the back row. But in general, I think what hurts him the most and that the reason why he I didn't push him or change him his position is the fact that elementary Sanctuary should exit now the Bliss or the PG. And this is definitely one of the main factors where I'm judging a lot of cards. With all that being considered, Blackbird still maintains his position. Very really solid deck, just that there is a card that kind of like get around with his restriction a bit more. Tamayura though, I feel like I want to drop Tamayura just a little bit. Mainly because of the fact that I have been playing Tama against uh, against Tamaria player for quite a while and one of the problems that he told me is that it's a little bit hard to set up everything consistently because there's a lot of way for the opponent to just get rid of the regard now. There is Bind from Ewa, there is Prison from uh, Prison himself and Technically, Barrow Magnus board wipe actually kind of limit the shield option as well. So in general, what makes uh, Tamayura strong is always that order, and that's why he's still here. She's still in the B tier, but the fact that she still have a little bit of struggling in getting both of the her glitter into so constantly is kind of the reason why I shift her position bound just a little bit. Okay, and yeah, the rest I think is in the good position because they are still very solid and they still can compete even in like the meta where turn 3 needs to start rushing. 
Okay, let's move on to A tier and there are definitely a few entries I want to adjust. The first and foremost being Ted Greer. As I mentioned just now and uh, earlier part of the video, uh, Ted Greer is always, sorry not Ted Greer, the meta of old race at the moment has been getting faster so turn 3 is quite a crucial turn now instead of like turn 4 like in the older format. So because of that, because of the fact that Ted Greer get full advantage during the turn 4 onwards, and she does have a bit of a soul issue. I will drop her down. In the same position as Soga. A bit lower than Soga, I feel. Soga is still a slightly better deck than uh, Tegria now, thanks to Grape Soga. But yeah, I still think she's still a solid deck. A very fun deck to play. But it's a little bit slower now because of the fact that the games, the the, the progression of the game get a little bit faster in between the game. Then off face, I will push him up just a little bit into the roughly same tier as like in the middle of the A tier lah. Uh, here's the thing, now that office got a brand new card that allowed to generate shadow token when retired, that grade 3, it's allowed of face to actually make 5 attack that actually is scary because you know with 2 eternity and the 2 shadow tokens means that you get at least 40k column without the personal riding one eternity later essentially office multi attack has got a lot better so it has more quality attack now than just like throwing five attack consistently so yeah that's why i want to reprofile the Re uh, cardinal sorry regis or fist regis just a bit okay so for gravidia in my personal opinion it doesn't change much because uh despite a lot of things happen with like elementary assumption and also the uh what's the card also the the crit guardian heal i'll just call it like that the crit guardian here doesn't really affect um gravidia as much as some of the other unit in this list is some of the other deck in this list so she remain or more or less very strong option but i will put a big but here it's kind of like a high rolling deck now of course because you need to be able to rush on turn 3 gravity is capable of doing that not consistently but it's still a really strong rush you know like ability to just get a lot of tons of crit is just really insane so yeah next up we have loro and this is one of those decks that i will push it to lower like here mm, yeah about right like about this about this low Okay, so the reason why I want to I push Loro to like a uh, lower A tier is because of the fact that Elementary Sanctitude ex Sanctitude exists. Yes, she still can dish out five attacks, but her problem comes with the fact that during the Lyrical Booster 2, she didn't really get the support that she needed, being able to just find help to search her song better. And now that the elementary action shoot came out, that means that like opponent technically have one uh, chance to get away from your Loro attack, which usually is like a finisher attack. So because of that, the fact that like opponent can last one more turn because of that single card really really hurts Loro. And the fact that Loro is also a turn for deck also hurts her deck quite a lot. So yeah, I mean I wanted to rank her lower, but I think the fact Elementary Ascension didn't really exert too much of an effect onto the meta in itself, but it does exert enough for the listing to change. Okay, uh, we next up we have Bruce, and well, because of all the adjusting, I think Bruce just stay at the exactly where he is right now. I think the fact that Bruce now have a game three, uh, sorry, a turn three plan really, really make his deck a little bit better to play because you don't really lose one turn to opponent because you can just do rushing on turn 3 already even if like it doesn't do a lot of things but the fact that like there is card effects that allow Bruce to play some games during the turn 3 really really helps the deck a lot and I think it will definitely change the playstyle of the Bruce player for sure provided they're willing to bend into like a Julian's playstyle a bit here and there but yeah I think um, Julian and like the Bruce specific support without like, Ikikase really really helps the deck in general regardless of whether you're going unrival or just go personal right okay next up Barrow um, Barrow didn't change also like 
I think the fact that the barrel position didn't change is now due to the fact that Amandine came in and it essentially changed quite a bit the way Barrow Magnus play. As now, Barrow Magnus can kind of like just run lesser cards that really soul charge too much, like a charge a huge amount, and just run a bunch of like small soul charge that can have that have some utility, which allow them to just hit 15 very quickly. And after playtesting it without the use of pandemonium, it's really 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 powerful. And the only thing that I think Barrow Magnus need to be careful now is the fact that it can over soul charge and that's the only thing that it can it is already uh happened it's just that it happened a little bit more harshly now because of the amandine condition and everything but that also means that sometimes the opponent will willing to get it uh willing to get their vanguard hit just for the fact that they, they can thin down deck in the later turn so i think that the fact that the it kind of forced the opponent psychologically to think that do you want to make the barrel deck out or do you want to guard the attack? And that's why I feel Barrow Magnus is definitely has a huge improvement now. And it's still, in my opinion, one of the Bushiroad head shout in an ex and in, in a sense that like they, I feel like they're trying to get rid of Barrow from the meta tier, but he keeps coming back, man. Okay, then the only deck E tier deck that I will shift up from A tier to S tier, it's just right in front of Barrow. Nirvana. Okay. So I already mentioned that Nirvana is getting a lot stronger thanks to the existence of Emilia. But what I didn't realize is that after the the card effect has been out for a while, uh, sorry, after the Emilia has been out for a while, a lot of Nirvana player was winning games here left and right because of the fact that you can get a lot of souls using Emilia, and because of that, they can get into get for turn very quickly means that they can reach their 5 attack quickly as well through Escuridia. And Escuridia needs soul and who gives souls? Emilia. So essentially what's happened is that the fact that the deck can accelerate so now means that they can hit 5 attack very consistently now. And because of the fact that like it has a power, it's, it's already a very solid power column, sorry power row with the Maha effects and their own effects it makes the fire attack that no one do a lot scarier than what baro can do because baro can get shut down by a trigger no one a little bit harder to do so and because of that he finally is in the top three at least in my tier list well so yeah okay so for s tier there is a minor adjustment i mean i already said before, already at the start of the video i will only put three decks in the s tier and the deck that will be going down is passion okay so um I don't think Bastion didn't really get weaker. It's just that, in fact, he has he has been one of those that I can rush from turn three. It's just that he just got kicked off because no one just get better than him now at multi attacking. So yeah, it is in this case his uncertainty to the opponent kind of his downfall as well. And okay, so if you guys wondering why I'm not pushing down Prison or Magnolia at all. Well, there is a few reasons. For one, Prison did get a few new tools that essentially just make the deck a lot more harder to predict. And if the opponent go if you go for aggressive Prison, you have a brand new card that essentially allow you to deal four attack Prison deck. And if your opponent trying to play a long game with you, means that you can have four attack with double crits, which is actually scary despite the need of a lot of counter blast. But I don't think it's that's the end of the world. Then for Magnolia. Yes, you are losing in lead pulse due to the restriction list, but in my honest opinion, he clapped back harder. Nice. Yes, I'm talking about the clapping dragon, and essentially a lot of the new Stoic Kia generic support really, really kind of synergized very well with uh, Magnolia. And we already kind of see in the a bit of a teaser in the anime as well with how new Magnolia support gonna look, and I can see that it looks very promising as it get a lot better over time and because of that i feel magnolia is still one of the strongest deck regardless of the meta at the moment like he still can fight and that's pretty much the the adjustment to the tier list now let's move on to the brand new right lines so starting off with crossover dress and in my honest opinion crossover dress is kind of like somewhere here at the moment so i will need to shift one of the deck out so the reason why i want to push over the actually here yeah i think it's here better i don't want to rank it too high so essentially jewa is one of those decks where i feel like it's almost hit air tier because of the fact that the deck has a lot of things that it done right 
for one you can spawn back to regard at the cost of this card one that's insane next up yes crossover days is a lot more expensive than overdress now but what you get back is a lot of huge rewards especially with how they're trying to design prayer dragon to be act to have their effect activated when they cross over race and some of them are having a really good effects already like brahmana withdraw to discard one alondai that turned garu into a beast and in general i think crossover race is just much stronger than the old race card with like garu with ability to force guard restrict as early as turn 2 bram with a huge chunk of the dps and views which just fetch back anything that was killed by the opponent through retiring. So in my opinion, I think the card that they released for the crossover rate is really really powerful. And the only thing that is kind of missing right now is is something that the earlier Oridress was lacking and that's ability to just search for the Oridress card more consistently or any of the other two options that they did for the crossover race in general. So I think if they can improve the consistency in that area, the deck might be a S tier contender and that I'm not joking. Okay, then we move to drag, uh, sorry, drag Jewelt and this one, I'll put it him in the same position as uh, Chaos right now. He's playable, but I feel like he really need the cards coming from BTO7 to really, really make him stand out. But this is just not good of a card to really, really make his playstyle stand out because like you are wasting counter blast for like something that really cheaply hard to pull off like i think like both these will definitely be more useful in the future because it's very generic but for now i think whatever the uh, dragon will get for his deck it's just not good right now and he's still a lot clunky to play and yeah like i said just now it definitely gonna need the bt07 support to really really judge dragon well properly so for now I'm gonna leave him in the C tier. Bottom of C tier, close to D tier. Like, get help. Then move on to uh, Yusberg. And Yusberg, in my opinion, is kind of like a in the Tamayura situation. In the sense that it has a very decent mechanic. Rebel Days is a very powerful mechanic. But I feel like so far the Rebel forms are on the weaker side of life. Why are you calling me? I'm right. In the sense that, like, they don't really do a lot. And some of the requirements can be very annoying to him to get out the only good thing about like railroad dress i can think of at the moment is the fact that they has a lot of filter like i think this is clearly the strongest filter deck amongst the whole format right now if you're not counting the uh, collab booster this has so much filter power that i wonder we should not forget to give that filter power to other decks or not so, so yeah i think the solar right, that's why i put useberg relatively in a good tier right now because it has a strong filter power but it does come at the cost of not very strong oh, uh, river form at the moment then we have galactic hero and this pain me because i like the playstyle a lot the scouting is a really fun ass mechanic to play it's d tier okay so there is a few reasons why i put it that way for one there is not a lot of way to scout like you can only scout through the order you can only scout through the that one grade one and the grade two for one turn only so in general i would say that the problem with him right now is just that he doesn't scout enough and there is not in and as a deck that need a base it looks like it need more base i feel like it's kind of like a gravity uh, situation in bto4 it needs something to really really make his the place are a little bit more consistent or a way to put the base up quickly i guess so yeah in general i think his bait is there just really urgently need of a new card at the moment my disappointment is immeasurable then we come to the last deck lion and i'm gonna put her in a playable tier so essentially lion in my opinion got really carried hard by a lot of the new support that come out during the BTO6 which are generic and really really powerful but I do feel that like the support that she get in the first in the BTO6 there are quite a few missed as well and that's why like there are still some issue that the deck has that hasn't been addressed yet and that is so the deck run burn through so like no tomorrow and there's not a lot of option to so charge yes they did try to come up with some but it's an on hit which in my opinion is a minus already so yeah i still think that lion has a lot of potential it's definitely a very fun deck it allows some of the weird tech in stock area to work and that's something that i really really respect her for but and at the moment she is not comparable to some of the higher some of the deck in the higher tier and yeah that's all i have for today in general i feel that the deck has a lot of improvements that i mean like the fact that there is a smaller amount smaller percentage amount of a bad decks or like a deck that requires more support that's really really shows that Bushrod is 
taking notes at everything and i hope that like at least in the the deck that was in the lower tier you get a card that really really improved the performance of the deck in general so what do you guys think do leave down in the comments below whether you guys agree with some of the ranking i'm putting up at the moment or do you have some issue with some of the entry that i have like the previous video as well i'm glad there are some engagements to the tier list so do engage more i really really enjoy engaging with you guys even if like it sounds like i'm being a bit aggressive and everything and yeah that's all i have for today take care of yourself and this is mac megane signing out